Hello, I'm Camille Manning Broom, and thank you for spending this day with us. There's no place I would rather be than here with you. We are connected as a community. A community is a group of people living in one space, practicing ownership. When I think of community, I think of people helping one another out and great public spaces, such as Trafalgar Square, where people come together, share ideas, and exchange knowledge. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how communities evolve over time. I have the opportunity to work with mayors, elected officials, stakeholders across our state, assisting them in creating visions that reflect the community's values. And often, I'm confronted in going into places where we have to think really big on how to fix past mistakes. This is Gina, Louisiana, and LaSalle Parish, 2,500 citizens, many of whom I get to call close friends. And in the community of Gina, we were able to get everyone together and articulate a vision of how they wanted to evolve. And many times, it's very difficult to go from this big vision to reality. But that was not the case in Gina. Over three years, because of strong leadership, community support, and respect for the community, they were able to vision and see what they wanted to see in their community. It became a reality. And in Gina, you have a disinvested area that was slowly on a decline, and now you have people moving back there, companies interested in coming, and people reinvesting in their area. And we have a choice. Is it a ditch, or is it a great space that all of us can enjoy? These decisions take leadership. Think about the leadership it took in the late 1800s, when 850 acres were set aside in New York City to be a park. Today, it's valued at $529 billion. Only 21 countries in the world have a greater gross domestic product. This is the number one visited park in the nation and used daily by its community. And think about the transformation that's occurred in our own downtown over the last 10 years due to leadership, strategic planning, strategic investment. And now we're building great public spaces. However, over the last century, in the United States, we've had a strong focus on building individual property, where you actually have to drive to public spaces. In the United States, we are utilizing three times more square footage to build our homes than they are in the UK. And yes, we have more land. But to accommodate this space, we're going out into rural areas that don't have adequate public infrastructure. And I found myself here, my husband and I, Devin, six years ago, living amongst a sea of cookie cutter homes in too much space, sitting in traffic every day, morning and night, and we couldn't have access to any of our favorite spots, the places that we cherish in the city. So we asked ourselves, what are we doing here? Does this place reflect who we are? And the answer was no, a resounding no. And so we started thinking about what is it that we valued most? It was to be close to work. We both worked downtown. It was to be close to the places that we loved most about the city. It was to be in a neighborhood that had diversity and mixed incomes. We didn't want to look around and see everyone that looked like us. And so we also wanted to be in a place where change was occurring, where we could be part of the evolution. And being in the planning profession, it was very easy to me to quickly zoom into Mid-City. Mid-City is two miles from downtown. It's a typical inner ring suburb, but it had been disinvested in over time. And so we said, this is our place. This is where we want to go. So the hunt was on. We thought, OK, we'll rent out our house. We'll move into a duplex, live in one side, rent out the other side. However, what we found were 16 disinvested apartments and a house. And my husband challenged me. I go across the country and across the state talking about the importance of 
reinvesting in the urban core. And he said, let's do what you always talk about. And so I took that challenge on with him. And he, his buddy, and myself decided to quickly create a business and purchase these apartments. We did not have any money, so <laughs> we wouldn't be hiring a contractor, and all this work would be done by us. And we thought, oh, we've done a little tile work and some sheetrock work. We could figure it out. How hard can it be? But what we didn't know is that there was a lot of work to be done that was uh, way out of our skill set. I remember writing the first letter to the tenants, letting them know that we needed a list of everything that was wrong and that after we renovated one apartment, we would be moving in. The list was this long. My husband instantly had to become a plumber. He learned plumbing, and what I learned is when he was doing plumbing, to stay far away. <laughs> and our intent was not to relocate 16 families. However, to say that our presence was met with skepticism would be an understatement. As soon as we moved in to our 500 square foot apartment, all the drug dealers moved out. That first month that we had moved in, we had to call the cops and we learned that we had just purchased some of the worst apartments in Mid-City. Trespassers came constantly, knocking on the doors at late hours, looking for old tenants, wanting to buy something. And we felt like we needed a sign like this. However, instead, we decided to put the word out and to ask all of our tenants, let us know if you see anything suspicious. So one night around 10.30, we get a phone call. Someone's out in the parking lot sitting there. They've been there 15 minutes. So my husband gets his great-grandfather's prop pistol. We're not fans of guns, and we didn't even know if it worked. He says he's, he's going out there, and he's going to see what's going on. Well, there's no way he's going out there without me. So I get the video camera. He goes to the driver's side. I stand in the front with the camera, and this really big man gets out and says, Mister, you can point that gun at me, but for whatever you do, tell that woman to take that video camera away. He was with his mistress. <laughs> he didn't want to be on the camera. And slowly, we were seeing progress. Our vision was becoming a reality. We could see it. We knew where we were headed. And then, on a Saturday afternoon, I get a frantic call from my husband. Something about a murder. And it had happened at the apartment complex next door. So I pick him up. I take him to the police station. He thumbs through a very large stack of mug shots and is able to identify one of the shooters. Later, he would go on stand and testify Against, him, against the murderer and put him away for life. At this time, we had really big decisions to make. Were our lives at risk? Was it worth it? I'm not sure where the strength came from, but we knew we had to keep moving on. This was our neighborhood. This was our work. We believed in it. We had a vision. The community provided us lots of support. All of the tenants around and all of the, our, our neighbors wanted to also see our vision take shape. After Gustav, immediately, an hour after the storm had passed, I was out there, my husband was out there, we were cleaning up, picking up debris. And Miss Marilyn, who when we went over this TED talk with her, she told me her grandson, who had evacuated and was staying with her, asked her, well, Granny, why do you want to go out there? You don't, these properties don't belong to you. This isn't your place. And her response to her grandson was, because I have pride in where I live. And he said, well, come on, Granny. Let's go get to work. All of the tenants were out there. Our apartments looked immaculate after the storm. And we continued to build. And we, can, we, build it, we built great public spaces. It was gr really important for us to build a place that we would want to live build a place that made it feel like it was a real community. And my husband became a master carpenter. And then all of our tools were stolen. It was like we were in a boxing ring and just kept getting knocked down and knocked down. And we realized there were four other apartment complexes around us, and they all needed attention. But we couldn't let this deter us. 
we knew where we were headed. And so we continued building. My husband would put extra time into his craftsmanship. We built our own doors, our own cabinets, our own countertops. And five years later, we've changed the face of our block and our community. It was a hard road, but we are so proud of what we've accomplished. But today, with an 18-month-old son and a new baby in two months, it's time for us to have just a little bit more space. And so we purchased a home several blocks away, and we're renovating it as we speak. But this is not our last project. We invested in our community and built the type of environment that we wanted to live in. Our investment was good for our family, it was good for our neighbors, it was good for all of us. And we've seen our actions inspire others to do the same. However, the revitalization of Mid-City is just occurring. There's a lot, work, a lot more work that needs to be done, and we've got to focus on infrastructure and building complete streets so that access for all users can occur and we can have a safe place to live. Last year, I watched a TEDx by Jason Roberts, and he had come up with this method to go out and temporarily build a demonstration project, a mock-up street. He got a bunch of his friends, and they went out, and they painted on bike lanes, and they put up pop-up shops together. They basically did everything that the ordinances said that they couldn't do. And I thought, well, that, this is a great way for our community to come together, use our hands, materialize the vision that we have for Mid-City, and we're all part of it. We all have ownership over this space. Mid-City has a vision, many plans in place. We need to take a cue from Gina and make the vision a reality. So we've partnered with the mayor's office and other agencies, and we will do a demonstration project on April 13th and 14th it's an opportunity for all of us to come out and with a little bit of imagination, envision what a well-designed street could be. We'll take a four lane down to a two lane arterial. We'll have a center turn lane with a planted median. We'll paint on bike, walk, um, bike paths and crosswalks, landscaping, street furniture, benches, exactly what could happen if we have all the right ingredients together of leadership, respect, and community support. Pop-up cafes will occur. We're partnering with the Baton Rouge Walls Project to paint on murals. It's going to be a great opportunity for our community to all be able to physically feel what could happen. And renovating apartments might not be for all of you. It might be for some of you. And if it is, think about buying a duplex or a fourplex instead of that big house. Think about going into an area that might not be there yet, but it's something that reflects your values. And if it's not for you, as you go around your community, ask yourself, does this place reflect my values? Is this all that we can do? And together, let's build a better community for our children and our future generations. Thank you for letting me share a story with you.